And I'm now joined in studio by Ambassador David Kikaya. He's an international relations expert and a lecturer at the United States International University in Africa. He's joining me here in studio in Nairobi. Ambassador, thank you very much for joining us on the link. Now, China thank has you. been an important uh, economic and political partner for Africa now over the last decade. So what can African countries learn from China in terms of governance, in terms of development policies and strategies? Yeah. Well, as you have rightly said, China has been a a partner with Africa for a long time since the inception of the what we call the non-aligned countries where we talked about group of 77 plus China so we have a very long Africa has a very long history with China but in terms of uh, governance issues uh, Africa has quite a lot to learn from uh, China in fact some of these things have been outlined by uh, Xi Jinping in, at this conference uh, for example when it comes to the rule of law uh, the fact that uh, they are insisting on uh, fundamental laws that are relevant, that are acceptable, that are enforceable, and that people can look at. And I think that's one thing that uh, uh, Africa can learn uh, from China in terms of governance. Right. Uh, when, when we look at other issues, though, how do you see Africa benefiting, like when it comes to the economic uh, areas? Because we've seen infrastructural development uh, having mm. been a major area where China has influenced Africa's mm. infrastructural development. So how does Africa stand to benefit by being a part of China-led yeah. initiatives like the Belt and Road Initiative? Yep. Yeah. Well, China controls about 30% of international global development. And that's not a very mean... Uh, some especially of uh, amount of money involved and in this it is actually incumbent on African countries to carve strategies that dovetail with China's strategy as outlined in what China is now calling uh, uh, rejuvenated socialism with the Chinese character how does Africa tap into this yes infrastructure has been one way the road infrastructure uh, the, the belt that uh, China has come up with uh, how does Africa interconnect on this belt so that there are beneficiary of that slice of 30% that China has put outside there. So yes, the potential is there. How do we capitalize on it? It depends on how Africans strategize themselves to take advantage of that. So how do we capitalize? That is the actual question because but what extra value can Africa get from leveraging its uh, development partnership with China? By identifying what is important to China and that is diversification of China's economy uh, outside the borders of China. And therefore, looking at, in terms of just economic uh, expansion, not only just economic expansion, but how does it also benefit China in terms of uh, her political standing in the global world? Remember during the Cold War period, Africa, most of Africa was kept out of China, and China was kept out of Africa. So from that particular avenue, that window of opportunity, uh, at the end of the, the, fall, the Great World Fall, Africa can definitely use that opportunity to tap into the Chinese resources to fulfill China's ambitions globally, but also to benefit their own development agenda at home. China is a major investor now for many African countries and also an, um, a major trade partner for the continent as a whole. In fact, a leading uh, trade partner mm -hmm. for Africa. A Chinese pre President Xi Jinping says China would ease market access and protect legitimate interests of foreign investors. What exactly does that mean for that, Africa? That means for Africa, Africa can now be able to export into the Chinese market. They can also be able to import uh, f from the same market. It also means that uh, Africa can have, have easier credit facilities from the uh, Chinese uh, financial sector in order for them to generate locally manufactured goods that can then be re-exported either to China or to other countries. And that seems to borrow very closely a leaf from uh, the Agua strategy that the Americans have used. So this is a very timely uh, move by, on the part of China. So of course many African countries will be wondering how they can position themselves to mm. maximize on this. They should take advantage of what uh, uh, Jinping has just said. For example, he's talked about lifting 60 million Chinese from poverty. Africa should closely watch how is China doing that so they can do exactly the same because we find ourselves in the same sector. Secondly, look at the energy sector. He says he's going to emphasize the existence, coexistence between man and the environment. In the energy sector, Africa can also learn quite a lot from this so that they can produce what uh, Jinping calls ecologically sound energy. Africa is almost like 50% deficient in, uh, in energy, yet we have about 80% potential uh, in energy. Look at our solar, look at our hydro. So is, this is, is the requirement of Africa to prioritize their strategies so they can actually tap into the policy positions 
that Jinping has pronounced at this very important conference. All right, uh, Ambassador David Kikai, we'll leave it there for the moment. Thank you very Cheers. much for joining us on the program.